TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Now, I recently did like... Get that damn fly. Uh, I recently did... Uh, I'm going to edit that out, too. I recently did uh, UK gun laws versus Chicago. I mean, not Chicago. US gun laws. Um, and there was a lot of t controversy about it. So I'm going to do American cops versus British cops. Let's get into it, dude. This video is sponsored. Yeah, it's not sponsored. Chill. Enemy invasion planned for later this week, and you should definitely join us. Now, let's move on to the main part of our video. Whatever we might think about the police, one thing that's certain is that we are fascinated by them. As early as the 50s, the police crime drama started filling our TV screens, was, and long before I've never been fascinated. For that, Arthur Conan Doyle and Edgar Allan Poe planted the seeds for the genre of detective fiction. The good cop, the bad cop, or even the rebel with a cause cop kind of shows in the 70s have evolved into more realistic series such as The Wire, which give us a more nuanced version of police work and those that do it. In real life, Wire's dash cool. cam footage from police vehicles has also become a staple in the online content we consume. Today we are going to concentrate on real life cops, and perhaps the two most famous, sometimes infamous police forces in the world, in this episode of the Infographic Show, American Cops versus British cops. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so that okay. you can be part of our Got notifications. You, no problem. Prior to what we consider an actual police force, the ancients had many ways to police the polis, or city. Slaves in ancient Greece would handle the rowdy crowds when tempers flared, while the Romans might set their praetorian guard on out-of-control rioters. Through the ages, there have been myriad ways to maintain public order, and also some pretty gruesome punishments for those that breach the accepted rules. Okay. In the UK, it wasn't until 1749 when a judge named Henry Fielding created what was called the Bow Street Runners, the first time Britain had anything what we can associate with today's police force. As British cities grew at a rapid pace under the Industrial Revolution, so did crime. And so on September 29th, 1829, the Metropolitan Police Service was formed in London, and it is said to be the first modern police force ever created. The man okay. behind it, Sir Robert Peel, explained why England needed cops. I want to teach people that liberty does not consist in having your house robbed by organized gangs of thieves, and in leaving the principal streets of London in the nightly possession of drunken women and vagabonds. Why were they nicknamed okay. Bobbies? Well, after their founder, Robert. As you know, the USA was noted for its Wild West outlaws. One of those was Billy the Kid, who was shot by Sheriff Pat Garrett in 1881. Like Britain, America had ways to control crime, but for a long time there was no formal police force, and so the job of keeping folks in line often went to private contractors such as the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. Systems including Night Watchmen, and even what some called Goons for Hire, weren't workable as the USA grew in population. It's thought that the first American formal police force was created in Boston in 1838, New York City followed in 1845, and by the 1880s, just about all American cities had an organized police force. Now okay. that we know something about the history of these two countries' police forces, let's look at the present day. The number of police officers in just England and Wales has decreased significantly in the last decade, which has become a major political issue in the UK. The number in 2016 of officers in the force was 124,066, down from 143,769 seven years before that. The number of full-time officers working in Scotland in 2016 was 17,242, and the number in Northern Ireland was 6,700. That's a total of 148,081 police officers working all over the United Kingdom. The population okay. of the UK is 65.64 million, so roughly there is one police officer for every 448 people. Much That's of the British media and the public are saying that or it's maybe. not enough, especially as the crime rate rise in the UK is okay. rising faster than it has in a decade. This includes a rise in violent crimes and homicide. Over the pond in the USA, crime rates are much higher, and as some police departments are looking more like military units, the role of police in society has met with some controversy. Finding the actual number of sworn police officers working in the USA in 2016 uh, isn't difficult. that easy. This is because figures given by the US Bureau of Justice Statistics haven't been updated in a few years. The total number of police agencies in the US is around 18,000, but that includes all branches of police. If we take just local police departments, that number is more like 15,500, according to PolitiFact. The old data that is often cited says that in 2008, there were 765,000 officers that had the power to make an arrest. The US Department of Justice gives the number of 750,340 for 2012. 
Wow. According to the National Law Enforcement what? Officers Memorial Fund, that number has shot up and is presently about 900,000. The U.S. population is 323.1 million, so that means that roughly there is one cop for every 359 people. One of okay. the major differences is that in the USA, police carry guns, as do 36% of American households, according to the Washington Post. It's reported that in 2016, 135 police officers died in the line of duty, with around half of those that died being fatally shot. The Guardian reports that the hmm. number of officers killed in the line of duty in the UK is a total of 11 since 2010, although many officers are assaulted in the UK. In 2015, it was reported that 23,000 assaults occurred against officers in just England and Wales. In 2017, the Police Federation of England and Wales reported this figure to be not even close to the real number. It said there were 2.4 million assaults in 2016, Damn. and an officer was attacked every 13 seconds. Jesus. Our lesson today is... Damn. An officer was attacked every 13 seconds. 300,000 of them seconds? involved attacks with deadly weapons. The report said the average police officer is assaulted 19 times a year. On the other hand, in the USA in 2016, police officers killed a total of 1,093 people. According to inquest.org, in the UK in 2016, a total of five people were shot and killed by police. The total number of people shot and killed in the UK since 1990 is 67. We should add here that regular cops in the UK don't carry guns, but armed police can be called when it's thought guns are needed. Police in Northern Ireland right. are different, routinely carried carrying firearms. According to the newspaper The Mirror, in 2016 there were 1,863,524 legally owned guns in Wales and England, most of which wow. were shotguns. Okay, most of which are shotguns. If that's still a crazy now, I didn't even think that was a lot. I didn't even think that was... It was that much. It's thought there are another 277,000 guns in Scotland and a further 150,000 legally owned guns in Northern Ireland. The same okay. newspaper said there were another 2 million illegally owned guns on the UK streets, which has raised the question... Wow, so 4 million guns in the UK streets. Huh. If the UK police should be given firearms. The murder rate per capita in the US is still 30 times higher than in the UK, which might not be surprising considering there are more guns than people in the country, according to the Washington Post. As for assaults on officers, there were 51,548 assaults against US police officers in 2015, with a total of 14,453 injuries sustained. With this in mind, how does life on the job compare between the two forces, and how do you even get a job as a police officer? In the UK, you can join when you are 18. There are no restrictions on height, but the force does ask you to be in good enough physical and mental shape to undertake police duties no form how is mental shape determined that's what they just said how is mental health determined normal qualifications are required but you will need to pass some tests to get in pass them and you are in just you as long as you haven't committed any serious offenses in the past it's similar in the u.s although the police force does usually ask for a high school diploma and that you are either 18 or 21 depending on the department i think you need a two-year um two-year criminal justice degree or two years in college now I think you have to train at a police academy and have either a clean criminal record or have only committed minor offenses. There is no minimum or maximum height or weight limit, but in the academy, you'll have to pass certain physical. That's why they be fat ass guys and shit. Agility tests. Nowhere does it state you have to enjoy eating donuts. Wages vary, but in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, you can expect to start your career as a police constable on anything from twenty-five thousand U.S. dollars to thirty thousand dollars. If you work hard, UK career websites say that within about seven years, that wage can be forty-eight thousand eight hundred seven. US dollars. You should work shit. a 40 hour week, although police work can often mean overtime and also emergency call outs. You'll get 23 days annual leave and also full sick pay. The pension varies depending on time work, but the average police pension in the UK is thought to be around $20,465 a year and the normal retirement age is 60. In the US, salaries differ from state to state, but a rookie cop working in the NYPD can expect to earn $46,288 per year. After five and a half years, this could rise to $90,829 if you have done well. Other states have have average wages closer to 30,000 and others 70,000 according to career I think website. We're going to combine two videos to no one. to start with, but after 5 years it will increase to 27 days. You'll also receive unlimited fully paid sick days, medical benefits, dental benefits and optional retirement after 22 years on the force. Right, like the UK, you will work around 40 hours a week in shifts, but that might change with overtime. How much pension you receive can be affected by multiple factors, but various websites put the average police pension anywhere from 58 to 62,000. dollars With money in mind, we'll end the show there. Where would you rather be? A Cop, the UK or the eh, let's watch this one as well. Okay, so from the top bottom, we have our PR our radio communication with each other. And what? Um, got body worn video. Um, okay. Activated on most so, this is how does UK police equipment compare to US cops as well? Jobs. It's got a 30 second buffer so that when we do activate it, it pre records 30 seconds so it gives us some sort of time. So, if we do miss anything, we don't press it in time, it pre records 30 seconds. Beforehand, which is quite useful. Um, I'm carrying a taser, which is um, 
about four hundred officers currently in Kent. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so that's that's the page itself. It's an X two. It's got two two shots um, capability. Um, that's recently come in over the past year. Harbour, which is a pepper spray, um, which all officers carry. Um, the ash button, rigid handcuffs, and then these are fast straps. So if someone's been particularly un unmanageable, um, these Velcro straps. Man, I mean, I guess there's less crime in the UK, but it looks like the cops out there are just like, if something goes left and they're not prepared, they're, they're, they're in for a long night. To be placed around their, their legs just to make them manageable. Like lot of colleagues, I've got most of the kit, albeit just apart from the taser. So the most noticeable thing, obviously, he's going to have is his firearm, his sidearm. It is. Or a Glock 9mm semi-automatic handgun. In addition to that, he'll have his impact weapon, his baton, latex gloves, combat tourniquet to be able to use on civilians or fellow officers or, or himself for that matter. He carries a Leatherman multi-tool, handcuffs, spare magazines for his sidearm, his taser, his radio, and an individual first aid kit, which is again, another gunshot wound and severe bleeding prevention kit. Sergeant. So they carry all of that. You know what I mean? How heavy is the kit you're carrying? They carry all of that. Sh that Chicago cars don't carry all of that. Where, where is this? City of where? Does it sometimes get a little cumbersome? It's about 30 pounds total. City of... They carry. It does get cumbersome when you first put it on. I had to get used to these uh, extra girls? pouches here. What but after a while, your body adapts to, to the extra bulk and you don't feel Yonkers. it after a while. Now, you're a fit bloke. You obviously work out. But I can't help but notice there's a bulge on your chest as well. <laughs> Unless that's muscle, that's something. What have you got there? I have a secondary firearm here. Um, so overall, wow. uh, our kit weighs around seven kilograms. Um, I'm wearing the uh, the stab vest and the kit belt. Um, there's also an option, optional load vest as well, which some people prefer to wear. Um, that obviously distributes the, the kit we have more on the body, whereas my kit is mainly distributed on the belt itself. Depends on personal preference on whether that's uh, on what you wear, but that's obviously up to the individual. I don't mean to interrupt, but is that a herpy on his lip? Like, it's been bothering me this entire time that I've been watching it, and I haven't said anything. But now it's just getting out of hand. Is that what I'm seeing? Could you imagine going on patrol either without your firearm or your taser? No, not Why at not? all. Why uh, not? The job we do is extremely dangerous and unpredictable. Yonkers? To go is out there New on York? is, is yeah. insane to me. In the UK, officers don't have anything like that. The best they have is a pepper spray. Would you be prepared to police the streets of London like that? What would you say to those guys and women who do it in London? I, I give them in, a lot. In the whole of England, actually, sorry. I give them a lot of credit for doing what they do without... Honestly, now that I know that they don't carry none of it, like, I honestly give them a lot of credit, too, because that's insane. That's insane. I'm out here police... Wow, that, I can't even imagine being a police officer, so let me take that back. Let's rewind. I, but that's insane, man. The, the, the weapons and tools that we have here. I don't think I'd be a police officer over there, essentially going at the mercy of the wolves. Captain, could you imagine sending the your mercy of the out? wolves? So every you know, what? without a taser, without a firearm of some sort. I would sooner go out without shoes than I would without without the kit like that. And I guess you feel the same, Sergeant. Yes. It's like putting your shoes on, right? All right. We put this to the UK officers in Kent. I think okay. there's a different environment out there. Um, I think uh, That's true. the taser roll out for, for us would give us a very good, you know, would give us enough use of force in this country. We do, obviously don't even, um, kind of have the same level of, of gun crime um, that, they do in, that they do in America. Um, and a lot That's of that still okay. That's true as well. Um, it's really just the firearm. Still, other. man. Yeah, I believe the mere presence of having a taser is almost enough sometimes to prevent as a detergent as a detergent deterrent violence towards myself or my colleagues um it's a it's a bright color it stands out people wear it's a bright color it stands out what the fuck do that mean right. when i go into jobs without i've been tased before uh it was in my younger days on some drunk shit and honestly that shit doesn't even hurt so person of like me like I, i'm keeping moving through a taser eh take it off having a taser as an option um subjects may feel that they have an advantage over it to some degree whilst i still got 
Hey, especially you have like what seven thousand pubs or seventy thousand pubs. Like people be drunk as hell. They can't feel like Taser drunk. And then y'all got the, the like London and UK is the highest rate of sugar booger booger sugar. Like off the off the off the class A drugs, you can't feel that I believe. So it's like that ain't enough. <laughs> Somebody with a knife, they off the booger sugar. They on your ass. It's as simple as that. Man, let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm good.